In various WPF applications we built across the channel, I typically mention the concept of stores. So stores in WPF applications manage application state and also act somewhat as mediators that allow us to communicate between V models. So the key thing about stores is that they use .NET events in order to communicate between V models and ultimately keep data in sync across our application. But the thing about .NET events is that they aren't as pleasant to use as something like reactive extensions. So in this demo, we're gonna use reactive extensions instead of regular .NET events in a WPF application store. And you can really apply these concepts to any object that acts as a mediator or uses .NET events. So first off, let's demo the application that we're dealing with. This is a grocery list. So over here on the left, we have our grocery list, which right now is empty. And you can filter items in the grocery list, but we have none in there. So first off, we should add something. So let me put bananas and let's add that to the grocery list. So submit, there we go, we got bananas. And of course we can filter this. So if I search for apple, then our bananas are removed. And if we search for bananas, then they stay in there. So the way this application is tied together and the way that we manage our application state here is with a store. So we have this grocery list store and we can add an item to it. So this is what gets executed whenever we click submit on that add grocery list item view. So we add an item to our list of grocery list items up here. And then we also raise this item added event. So we invoke that with our new grocery list item. And ultimately over in our grocery list view model. So this is a view model that provides data to our grocery list view. So the view on the left that we saw that subscribes to the item added event on our grocery list store. So whenever we add an item, this grocery list view model handles that and updates the items in our grocery list. So it also accounts for the filter and only adds the relevant items. And then speaking of the filter, we also update the items in our grocery list whenever the filter changes. So that's a basic introduction of the relevant pieces of code that we're going to be dealing with here. Let me put some breakpoints down just to solidify our understandings of this code. And we'll walk through this with the app running. So let's run this and I'm going to add an item to our grocery list. Let's submit this. And of course, in our grocery list store, we're adding our banana to our list of grocery list items. Let's continue that. Then we raise this item added event and that gets handled in our grocery list view model. So we update our items clear the previous items and then go through and add the new items from our grocery list store that match our filter. So continuing there, there we go. We got our banana. And then when the filter changes, we update our items again based on the new filter. And then finally, since we subscribe to this item added event on our grocery list store, we also unsubscribe whenever we dispose of this V model. And that's important so that we don't end up with memory leaks. So everything we have here works fine, I would say. But there are some issues to just using .NET events. So one thing that's quirky about .NET events is the way that you subscribe to an event. And you simply do this plus equals and you get nothing back. So nothing is telling me that I need to unsubscribe. Whereas if you're using reactive extensions and you subscribe to something, you get back an I disposable and that signals that you probably need to unsubscribe from this at some point. And that's especially important here because if we didn't unsubscribe, then we'd have a memory leak. So that's one nitpick I have. Of course, the counter to this argument is just remembering to unsubscribe, but I still like how reactive extensions makes it more explicit. And then the second benefit to using reactive extensions here instead of a .NET event is that we get to utilize all the helpful operators that reactive extensions exposes in order to pipe data however we want. Whereas with .NET events, we have to take on all of that in the event handler. So with all this in mind, finally, let's show off how we can port two reactive extensions. And this is all gonna start in the store where we no longer wanna use an event here, we wanna use reactive extensions. So actually, first off, let's install reactive extensions. So search for system.reactive and install that. So here we go. So the first part of setting up a reactive extensions observable is figuring out what our asynchronous data stream is. So what are we observing? So in this case, we're observing all the times that we add an item to our grocery list. And this is all gonna be done manually. 
So we manually want to push data to our asynchronous data stream. So since we manually want to push to an observable, we're going to have to use a subject instead of leveraging a built-in observable. So let's define a subject up here. So this is part of reactive extensions. Let's import subject and we'll call this the item added subject. Let's make this read only as well and initialize this in the constructor. And then also we're going to be pushing strings to our subject. And these strings represent the item that we're adding to our grocery list. So the description of the item. So let's use the generic subject type and specify that this is a subject for strings and update that initialization down here. So now that we have this subject, instead of raising this item added event, we're simply going to push our item to the subject. So this subject is an on next method and we can push in our grocery list item description to this. So now anything that is subscribed to this subject will receive this item description. So now we just need to expose the subject so that we can subscribe to it. So instead of exposing this item added event, we're now gonna use our subject here. So let's expose a property for that. We'll let's call this the item added observable and point to our subject. So now that we expose the subject, let's subscribe to it and our grocery list view model. So we no longer have this item added event. Instead, we wanna to subscribe to our item added observable so let's subscribe to that and we should be able to just pass in this grocery list store item added method here to handle that subject so this will be our on next handler so here we go doing the same things before just updating our items so eventually we're gonna have to unsubscribe to this so that we don't get memory leaks and as we can see this returns an i disposable that we'll have to dispose in order to unsubscribe so we'll call this the grocery list store item added subscription and we can just throw that into a field so here we go got that i disposable field up here and then when we dispose of this view model we can just dispose of this subscription so that'll unsubscribe us and we won't have memory leaks so if we run this we should have the same behavior just using our observable now so let's add an item and there we go, we add our item over here and we can still filter. So before we move on to enhancing this, one thing I wanna point out is that in our store, we've exposed the entire subject. So really anything across our entire application could take the subject and push anything it wants to this. So in our case, we should definitely encapsulate this subject and just expose an eye observable. So now anything from outside the store can't just push some random data to our subject. So that should handle the changes that we wanna make on our store, but I still wanna enhance this view model to simplify some things here. So next up, I also wanna create an observable that observes whenever this filter changes, and then I wanna merge our filter changed observable with our item added observable, and then whenever either of these observables fires, I want to update the items. So the first step here instead of calling update items in the setter for this filter we're going to handle this with an observer so let's remove this and instead we're going to create an observable that observes on whenever this filter property changes and whenever that property changes we're going to call update items and update our list of items so let's just put that into the constructor up here so we're going to create an observable so let's import observable from system.reactive and we're gonna do from event pattern and from event pattern is going to convert our property changed event on our view model base, which is part of I notify property changed. It's gonna convert this event into an observable. So the way we do this is by first telling reactive extensions how to subscribe to that event. So to do that, it'll give us a handler and we just subscribe to property changed with that handler. And then we also tell reactive extensions how to unsubscribe. So just the inverse with a minus equals. Then we also have to use the generic from event pattern and specify the types for this property changed handler. So our handler type is a property changed event handler. So import that. And our args are a property changed event args. Whoops, and I just realized I made a mistake here. So we should be unsubscribing from property changed, not whatever I did here. So it should be property changed minus equals the handler. So with this, we now have an observable that represents all property changes. 
But in this case, we only care about whenever the filter property changes. So we can have a where operator here and we only want to handle events where the property name is our filter property. So with that, we now have an observable for whenever the filter changes. So let's subscribe to this. And whenever that happens, let's call update items. So let's test this out. Let me put a breakpoint on update items and that should fire whenever our filter changes. So let's add an item, just test and let's try filtering. There we go. We update items and we only show relevant items. Let's try and filter one out, make sure that works. And here we go. We have a and it removed our items. So now at the end of the day, both of these observables, so the one for observing on filter changing and the one for observing on an item being added to our grocery list store. They're both really doing the same thing. They're both ultimately calling update items. So what I want to do is merge both of these observables together and just handle item updates in one observer. So let's do that down here. So we're going to create another observable and we're going to merge two observables together. So we're going to use observable dot merge. Now let's just move in both of our observables. So the first one is our grocery list store item added observable that gets fired whenever an item is added to our grocery list. And then the second one is our observable for whenever the filter property changes. So let's move that in there too. And now with both of these observables merged together, let's simply subscribe now. Let's just copy this subscription that we're using up here and use that down here. And now when either of these observables emits, then we'll simply update our items. Now before I clean this up, one error that I've been ignoring. So whenever we try and merge both of these observables together, we have an error because it can infer the type that we want our merged observable to emit. And the reason they can't infer that is because both of these observables that we're merging emit different data. So for example, this item added observable emits a string, whereas this observable for the filter property changing emits this event with property changed event args. Now the good thing here is that our merged observable and our observer, we don't even bother using whatever gets emitted. So we don't really care what this value is. So in that case, we can just specify this to just be a generic object. And since string and our generic event pattern here, both inherit from object, of course, this is perfectly fine. So we can begin cleaning this up. Of course, we still want to dispose of this merged observable. So let's move that to our subscription object and remove this up here. We should also rename this subscription. We'll call it the grocery list items changed subscription. And then we unsubscribe whenever we dispose of the view model. So now last piece of cleanup, we no longer need this event handler down here for items being added. Everything is just handled in this update items method that we use in our observer. So now let's put a breakpoint here and test this out. Make sure our merged observable works. So let's add an item. Here we go, submit that. And here we go, our item added observable fired and we update items. There we go. And now our filter changes and we update items here because our filter property changed observable fired up here. So let's continue and all is good. So now even though we've consolidated a lot of this into an observable, it really depends how far you want to go with this, but there's still some things that we can move into this observable to enhance it. And we could even start tearing down this update items method if we really wanted to. So for example, let me just organize this onto new lines and figure out where everything starts. So after we merge these observables together, we could pipe the result of our merged observable into our grocery list store items. So now our observable emits an ienumerable of string that represents our grocery list items. And now that we're piping our grocery list items through this observable, we could filter them out in here too. So we could have another select and we could take those items and only select the items where they contain our current filter. So in fact, I can just copy this where statement here, use that here, except now we're using our items. So now our observable is going to emit the already filtered items to our observer. So in that case, we could really just do the update in here probably. So we clear our observable collection, 
So items.clear, and that'll clear the list of items that we display on the UI. And then all we have to do is cycle through the items that got emitted and add those for our observable collection on the UI. So with that, we don't really need this update items method down here anymore. And this is cool having everything pushed and consolidated into this observable. But at the same time, I feel like we've sacrificed the readability that we had before where we had our update items method down here. And that method could be used by anything else that wanted to update items based on the state of the view model. But at the same time, piping everything through the observable allows us to use more advanced operators if we needed to. But this was really just a demo of how much you can push observables and how much you can do with observables if you need to, depending on your use case. But lastly, let's test this out, make sure everything is good. Let's put a breakpoint here. So again, add an item, we hit our observer, everything is good, and we can still filter and that gets handled by our observer as well. So just to summarize, we updated our grocery list store to use an observable via a subject instead of a traditional .NET event. And then we handle this item added observable in our grocery list view model to ultimately update the items that we display in the UI. And then we also merged in an observable for whenever the filter property changes. And for both of our merged observables, we update the items in our UI based on the current filter. So hopefully you can find some use cases where it would be beneficial to use observables instead of traditional .NET events, such as in stores, mediator objects, or really anything that could have used .NET events. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.